this to be quite surprisingly cool and quite a cool idea I think so I wanted to make a little video about it the idea is inspired by the boss blues driver now in the helix we don't have one of these you could do the same thing on the axe effects uh, you could do this on the hotone ampero anything which can separate a preamp from the amp right so bear with me on this so looking up uh, the source for some of this information was premier guitar and an article by Brian Wampler um, he breaks down the circuit of the blues driver and he says what's going on essentially is you've got two clipping stages and in between those two clipping stages you've got what is like a circuit version of a Fender tone stack. In the article he says basically the tone stack is simulated like with the bass up full, the mids up full and the treble off which would be a slightly odd way to do things, but I think that's part of what gives the Blues Driver its unique kind of feel and stuff. Now, we don't have one of these in the Helix, and I'm not going to try and tone match one because it would take too much time. But what I thought was, why don't we put in a US Deluxe Norm preamp in front of a Lone Star and also a Tube Screamer, and let's just see what happens. So this, to me, it seemed to do this sort of hyper-realistic thing. This is something I noticed with Quad Cortex, Kemper, to some extent Axe Effects as well. These devices, so when you do like a, a profile with a Kemper, one of the things that it often does is gives you more bass than the actual amp itself. Quad Cortex similarly. Helix generally doesn't seem to do that and if anything, sometimes it feels to me like there's less bass in the Helix than on the real things. Fractal as well, there's like really lively bass response. Um, 
now a lot of people interpret that as being the helix has like a weird high end but the way that i think about tone is that if you have something which has more bass then it's going to feel like it's a more bassy thing whereas if you have something with more treble you know these things are relative right you get the point anyway so i'll show you on the helix i've put together two presets for this there's one for hx stomp and one for helix um but i'll show you on the helix because i can do more with the preset it's going to take quite a bit of dsp to do this but i think the results could be worth it for some folks certainly if you were doing something like plugging a pedal board into the front of your stomp and you find it maybe a little bit dull or a little bit lacking in some ways this might be the sort of thing that i might do check it out i guess we could talk a little bit about why this is doing what it's doing a bit i could make some kind of guesses but you imagine that if people in boss in the 90s were doing this sort of thing there must be some sort of reason it says in the article that changes that you make before a clipping stage the eq are more connected to kind of feel and stuff so if you've got a load of bass before you hit a clipping stage apparently you get a lot of like a fuzzier feel whereas obviously you'd have a tighter response if you cut some of that bass so here's the idea here was the tone without this fender deluxe norm <laughs> This is the thing that's getting rid of the high cut on the cab, if you see there. I'll take you through some of this a bit more specifically in a minute. So that's the Lone Star by itself. And if you hit it with a Tube Screamer. And whilst that might be realistic, you know, the thing is that normally if we're hearing an amp in the room as well, we get a bit more of that kind of smiley face EQ, right? Because you get a big low end and you get some of that spiky stuff as well, as, you know. So I thought, well, we could do what the blues driver does and kind of stick a tone stack here in front of the amp. <laughs> the US Deluxe Norm is the model that I'm using there. I've got the driver 8.8, .8, bass at 5, mids at 5, treble at 7.3. You could fiddle with those and do it more like what the blues driver does, but let's see what that might have impact-wise. So if we turn the bass all the way up and treble all the way down and mids all the way up, this is apparently something like what is going on in the blues driver. <laughs> So let's just try this again. With the settings that I've got, so driver 8.8, .8, bass and mids and treble, we've got a bit more of a balanced response and plenty of that high-end sparkly stuff, which is what we might have been missing before, right? To the point that I thought, well, once we've done that, I would tame the the high cut in the cab a bit and I was finding that was really really responsive and fun to play it feels great under the fingers
and it even backs up on the volume knob a little better because necessarily it's a bit more compressed and a bit more of a sparkly preset now. <laughs> So if that sounds like the sort of thing that you want to try, then here are the settings. I've got the Scream 808, gain at 5.2, tone at 6.5, level at 6.7. Then I'm using the US Deluxe, Deluxe Norm preamp. So you see you've got amp, preamp, amp and cab. Use the preamp, so you're just using like the, the initial start of the amp. Drive at 8.8, .8, bass at 5, mids at 5, treble at 7.3, uh, master at 10, channel volume at 8, and sag and harm I've left where they are. If you wanted a tighter response, turn the sag down. If you wanted even more compression, you could wind that up further. Um, then I'm going into the Cali Texas Channel 1. This is a Lone Star Channel 1. Drive at 6, bass at 6, mids at 4.7, treble at 6.3, presence at 3.7, channel volume at 4.5. And I haven't touched any of the rest of those. Maybe the master taking that up to 5. Hot Springs in mono here. Um, we're using the dwell at four, spring cut at two, drip at medium, low cut at 200, high cut at five, and the mix at 27. Um, then we're going into a dual cab, 4x12 Cali V30, 57 dynamic, one inch away, and we've got the high cut here at three kilohertz or all the way open. Um, so I've just assigned that to that switch. Early reflections at 35. It's a dual cab. The other side, we've got a 160 ribbon, one inch away, same settings, 35 and the high cut assigned to this switch. Then I moved down to this path 2A, which obviously you couldn't do on the HX stomp, but you can here, transistor tape. Um, I've got that set up for. Some nice delay. So 500 milliseconds, 63% feedback, wire flutter 3.6, scale at 75, spread 2.9, mix at 25, headroom pushed up, and then lastly, a dynamic plate, 6.3 seconds decay, damping at 7.3, mix at 17%. So let me know, do you want me to drop that into the folder? Is this something you're going to give a try? I feel like there's definitely some benefit to this sort of approach, right? It's not necessarily more realistic or anything, but we're maybe trying to kid ourselves back into thinking, ah, that's what an amp is like. And, you know, that smiley face EQ type thing could be a really good way to do that. Um, so let me know your thoughts and this bright switch, if you're finding things too dark, you know, if you were in, in ears, I'd probably have that bright switch off. If you were, you know, thinking, right, let's get something really direct sounding, then put that back on maybe. I'll catch you in another video soon. Hopefully that was interesting to one or two of you. And um, yeah, I was really enjoying playing that. Cheers.